Hey internet, so today I thought we would do a long overdue perfume collection and review. It's definitely a video that I've had some requests for over a long period of time. So if you would like to know what my favorite fragrances are, then keep watching. So this white tray is where I keep all of my perfumes. In the front on the left hand corner there is a small candle burning which is a cranberry scent and that is purchased from Chapters Indigo I believe but it was a gift. And then in the far right hand corner is a white porcelain elephant piggy bank which was a gift to me I guess also but when I was a baby so I don't remember but it's become a sort of personal heirloom to me. So in this video we will be going through four categories of fragrances. The first are light fragrances, the second will be summer fragrances, and then finally more sultry evening type fragrances. In the far left corner I have what I call my no perfume perfumes, which means these are what I reach for often on weekends when I just don't feel like wearing something heavy, because in a way perfume is like clothing, so once you wear something it will cling to you all day long and um, sometimes you just have that feeling where you don't want that, where you want something light. Lighter. So I have a body lotion which is Coco Mademoiselle and I find that that's a really nice way to sort of really have a light fragrance is just to apply about a palm full of this on all of my pulse points. It's very strong. Right, I have another example of that which is a Summer Vanilla's Coconut from Bath & Body Works. I'm not a huge body splash person, in fact I've actively avoided them for years because I tend not to like the notes, I tend to find them very sort of tacky and I don't like spritzing it all over my body and I find that they don't last well. They're just not a great fit for my age or personality I guess, except for this one which is the Coconut Vanilla vanilla scent and it is so lovely and it immediately sort of transports you to that vacation feeling. It's very light, um, it doesn't leave any kind of residue on my skin, it just really kind of blends in with whatever lotion I might be wearing. In front of that is a small perfume from La Vanilla which is a very concentrated vanilla scent so if I want to pump up the one behind it then I'll wear that or if I just want a plain old good sort of sweet bakery scent on my skin that still um, feels like it has a high quality to it in terms of the complexity of the vanilla scent, um, then that's what I'll reach for. Marc Jacobs Daisy, which actually is more of a kind of grassy, very clean kind of scent. Daisies don't really actually have much of a smell, so it's more the idea, the sort of encapsulation of a daisy in a scent which is very clean and crisp. And then there's also Pucci's um, 330, which is a very watery fragrance. So this one is also very crisp, but, but in more of a kind of watermelon sea salt kind of way. It's one that I often take with me when I go somewhere beachy. Um, it's kind of hard to find but you can usually find it at your larger Sephora and it's one that um, I really never get tired of as well. So those are two really great options for warmer weather in my opinion, although if you don't mind a bit more of a summery scent they also would be great for work. Three perfumes that I typically wear to go to work, I find that they're all very professional and polished but still sort of different enough to feel like I'm representing my own femininity at the office and I'm wearing something that I just love the scent of because if you're sort of in a confined space like an office, fragrances will tend to be more enhanced as well so you have to make sure you are wearing something that you love. So on the far left corner is probably the most um, summery offering out of those although I actually wear it year-round which is that is Giorgio Armani's um, Aqua di Gioia and it's such a lovely fragrance. It is slightly more polished than the slightly more eccentric Pucci Aqua 330 that I just showed you. Um, so Aqua di Gioia is also aquatic and it has notes of mint, brown sugar, lemon, jasmine, peony, pink pepper and cedar wood. In front of Aqua di Gioia you can see Ali Saab. This perfume originally came out in 2011 to rave reviews. I still own this perfume. It's very potent so you can see I haven't um, used that much of it and unfortunately the color of it has degraded from a beautiful pinky champagne color to a slight yellow but the actual notes in the fragrance have stayed true. If you like yourself a woodsy subtle floral then you will almost certainly love this fragrance. It's one that I never 
never get sick of also. Um, and it has dominant notes of jasmine and orange blossom, which are lovely florals. And then it has a base of cedar, patchouli, and rose honey. And um, I just think it's a very sort of feminine, high-class fragrance. So Coco Mademoiselle is a true classic. It is actually the first fragrance that I wore when I started working because I knew that without fail, it would just make me smell classy and kind of match the image that I wanted to bring to my desk, I guess. So Coco Mademoiselle is also a floral perfume, but it's a floral citrus blend. Um, so it's got notes of jasmine as well as Sicilian grapefruit, Sicilian oranges, a very kind of heavy but tasteful note of rose, um, and then it's also got some light fruity notes to it. So it's got some lychee, and then also a base of patchouli, vetiver, vanilla, and white musk, which really kind of shines through throughout the day. I find that it has that kind of dried down of white musk, which I really enjoy because it's a slightly sort of mature scent, um, which is great if you sort of want that blend of femininity and maturity in your perfume. And finally, to round it off my perfume collection, I have my more sultry nighttime scents, which doesn't necessarily mean I won't sneakily wear a little spritz of one to the office during the day or on a weekend when I feel like going a bit more heavy-handed. If you're wary of smelling a little bit too old through a more sult sultry fragrance, then this one is a really good option for you. It lasts forever on the skin, and the notes in it that I detect are red fruit and patchouli. So you have that sort of smoky um, base along with some sweeter, um, kind of more fulsome notes. So I really like this perfume. Um, I think it does live up to its name of being like a little black dress. To its right hand side you can see YSL Manifesto. YSL is also really really good at producing scents that last very well on your skin. So I would say however and warn you that uh, Manifesto is kind of a love-hate fragrance. My mother and I have similar taste in perfume but she bought this for herself, liked it at first and then passed it on to me because she couldn't stand it anymore. Um, so it's a combination of jasmine with some vanilla and a very quite heavy-handed woodsy base. So if you want to know what I wore when Chris and I started dating, um, Desire by Dolce & Gabbana is that perfume, which was actually hand me down from my mother as well. Um, she buys a lot of perfume and then likes very little of it. She found that this one didn't last well on her skin, um, but that's something that is kind of a problem that tends to be unique to her. Um, it lasts really wonderfully on my skin and out of all of the perfumes that I've ever tried, this is the sexiest in my opinion. I'm not sure why that is, it's just a kind of very boy friendly um, but also girly fragrance. So Tom Ford Vel Velvet Orchid is one that I was initially very shy of because it's so rich um, and different from anything that I typically would wear. I got a sample of it and I became truly addicted to it. I would say it's my catnip out of all of these fragrances. Um, and I think that really is reflected in the notes, which are all things that I adore. So it has a light blend of citrus to sort of start it off. And then along with that, it's got notes of um, rose, honey and rum. So that sort of tells you how kind of rich and sexy it is. I hope that you guys like this review. Perfume is very difficult to describe. It's very personal, but it's still a video that I've been wanting to make, so I hope you guys liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!